Hey, it's Jo. So for today's video, we are going to eat mix seafood pancake, par fried na vermicelli, and mandu dumpling na my cucumbers at lettuce. May nakon dalawang dipping sauce, um, sweet chili, real fine na sweet chili sauce at saka um, QP na roasted sesame. Gusto ko lang maubos na, actually hindi pa siya ubos. Gusto ko lang ubusin na yung mga stocks ko sa ref para, alam mo, kapag move on na ako sa ibang pagkain. Meron pa akong I believe dalawang packs pa nitong frozen na mandu dumpling. Inubos ko na tong par fried na vermicelli na nakarap sa um, seaweed and itong pancake. Mixed pancake Ay, mixed. Ano ba yan? At saka itong mixed seafood na pancake. So, let's start. And ang dami namin pipino sa ref. And itong um, lettuce, binili namin ni mama kahapon. So, kailangan ko siyang i-film bako siya mag-expired. Kumbaga, sayang naman. So, as usual, yung mando dumpling, eh... As always, masarap na siya. Yung loob niya, vegetables lang. Pero siguro may karne din siya. Slide. Tsaka medyo mura yung pipino ngayon. And isang plastic yung pipino namin sa ref. Kaya kailangan bawasan. Pero favorite yun ni Mama. Every day siya kumakain. Na mayroong apple cider na vinegar. Which is healthy para sa katawan. butter lettuce
ipalaman natin siya sa lettuce. Hindi siya kasya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. big tayo today. Kasi parang hindi masyadong maganda yung lasa kapag uh, kape tsaka lettuce. Kasi natry ko na because I eat everything with coffee. Tinapay, prutas, orange, apple. I don't know. Kahit hindi ganun kaganda yung lasa. Gusto ko lagi na may kape. Because nga I work graveyard. So, sanay ako sa coffee. So, for today's video, we are going to talk about... <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So, for today's video, we are going to talk about an old case. A missing person's case. Actually, nahihilig talaga ako ngayon sa mga um, true crime. Kung baga... Hindi lang masyado yung mga gruesome. Ayoko nun. Although, um, minsan, nanonood ako. Kung baga, parang may matutunan din, parang reminder din sa ating lahat na anything could go wrong, anything can happen. Dun sa pinaka-unexpected, um, parang it's just a normal day. Pagkatapos may mga nangyaring patulad nito. And I believe until now, she still missing. Her name is Heidi Allen. It's usual na film ko na yung audio ng story time natin today because nga, ang hirap nung patigil-tigil ako tapos magtatagla ko ng teeth crumbs and then um magkukwento ulit, kakain ulit. I mean, medyo mahirap kasi siyang putulin. So, what I do is kakain muna and then insert the audio of the story time and then kain and then Tapos, diba? So, I will insert the audio now. 26 years ago, 18-year-old Heidi Marie Allen opened her workplace for the day. Then, she vanished into thin air. Heidi Marie Allen was born on September 14, 1975. She was employed as a clerk at the D&W convenience store located at the intersection of New York State Routes 104 and 104B in New Haven, New York. Heidi had to work that Easter morning in 1994. Her sister Lisa and the rest of her family were at home preparing Easter baskets. According to Lisa, Heidi was energetic and always smiling, a demeanor that she carried with her to work. In fact, Heidi wasn't even supposed to be working that day. She was filling in for a co-worker who wanted to spend the holiday with her kids, a proof that Heidi was a kind-hearted girl. According to Lisa, Heidi's sister, Lisa always put her friends first. Friends and family first. That's just the way she was. On the morning of April 3, 1994, Heidi had opened up the store by herself at approximately 5.45 a.m. 
the last recorded transaction on the cash register was at 7.42 a.m. A passerby flagged down a sheriff's patrol unit outside the store at approximately 8.15 a.m. and reported that the convenience store was open. Both lights and gas pumps were on, but it was unattended. An extensive search produced few clues as to Heidi's whereabouts and she has never been heard from again. An investigation revealed that Heidi was most likely taken against her will from the store. Her jacket, purse, and car keys were left behind in the store when she vanished. Her maroon station wagon was undisturbed in the parking lot and money was found in the cash register and on the counter. So, hindi siya burglary gun wrong. The police thought that it's kidnapping because yung pera nandoon pa din. Meron pa pera sa counter. Heidi was about to graduate from college with a degree in human services when she disappeared. And she hoped to get a career in education or counseling. Richard Thibodeau was charged with Heidi's kidnapping in May 1994, a month after Heidi was last seen. Richard's brother, Gary Thibodeau, was arrested on the same charge in August 1994, three months later. Richard was the last customer known to be in the store before Heidi vanished. He says he purchased two packs of cigarettes at 7.30 a.m. and he left. Gary Thibodeau was convicted of first-degree kidnapping in Heidi's case in June 1995 and he was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. Richard was acquitted of all charges in September 1995, Gary attempted to appeal his conviction, but he was denied in 1999. A witness saw two men leading a young woman into a van but couldn't identify any of them. So this witness was not sure if it's Gary or Richard, the brothers, Gary and Richard Thibodeau, and if it's really Heidi. Kung yung babae ba na sinasakay sa van ay si Heidi talaga. So according to this witness, the men, supposedly Richard and Gary, put Heidi into Richard's white and black van. Then drove to Gary's residence in Mexico about 8 miles away. Another witness saw a two-tone van swerving through the village of Mexico with the driver apparently struggling with something behind him. Several neighbors reported seeing a white and black van parked in Gary Thibodeau's driveway that morning. Both Thibodeau brothers volunteered to help with Heidi's search effort before their arrests. Prior to Heidi's disappearance, Melissa Surles, Heidi's cousin, gave her a gold bracelet with her name on it. Melissa stated the bracelet mysteriously turned up inside an envelope in her mailbox in 1994, so 10 years after Heidi's disappearance, but she didn't tell the police or anyone about it for years and the reason for her silence are unclear. The authorities don't know why Melissa didn't tell them about the bracelet. Heidi's abduction got additional attention in the summer of 2014 when investigators dug up the floor of a collapsed cabin looking for her body. They didn't find anything in the search, however. Heidi's mother, 
Sue Allen died in 2015 at the age of 66 on what would have been Heidi's 40th birthday. And according to Lisa, no parent should have to close their eyes not knowing where their child is. Ken Allen, Heidi's father, suffered a heart attack less than a year after Heidi's disappearance. Heidi was about 5'9 to 5'11. She was 145 pounds at the time of her disappearance. She was wearing a gray sweatshirt with a plaid SU logo imprinted on the front. She's wearing light blue jeans, size 9 or 10 white sneakers, and possibly an 18-inch gold chain necklace with a heart and diamond pendant. She has light brown hair, blue hazel eyes, and she has a 1-inch scar on her right knee and a freckle-type birthmark between her buttocks. Her ears are pierced, and she wears contact lenses or glasses with renaissance metal frames. And then, an evidence surfaced. Evidence that included proof that Heidi Allen was actually acting as a confidential drug informant for the Oswego County Sheriff's Department. At the time, Heidi was acting as an informant, she would have been 15 or 16 years old. According to documents obtained by Federal Prosecutor Lisa Pebbles, Heidi's parents gave permission for her to be an informant. The information was never passed to Gary Thibodeau's defense lawyer. It was later learned that an index card containing Heidi Allen's personal information in picture used to identify her as a confidential informant was lost in the parking lot of the DNW convenience store by a sheriff's deputy. So, nalaglag sa isang sheriff deputy itong index card na to containing Heidi's information dun sa same store kung saan kidnap supposedly si Heidi. So, according to the police, maybe um, someone na related sa illegal substances ang nakakita no information na yon about Heidi. Or maybe a lot of people saw that index card and the police thought that maybe that's the reason why Heidi was abducted. So, the new evidence surfaced when former Oswego County resident Tonya Priest came forward with information pertinent to the case. Tonya was flown to the county as a witness in the hearing. However, her testimony was cancelled. Three men, James Thumperstein, Roger Breckenridge, and Michael Borer are new suspects in the case. So, itong tatlong lalaki daw na to is involved in illegal substances and illegal things. James Thumperstein is currently serving a life sentence for the murder of his estranged wife and her boyfriend. On the other hand, Gary Thibodeau maintained his innocence until he died at the age of 64 in 2019 from complications related to COPD, a lung disease. Gary had been in a hospice care for the past year in the hospital ward of the Coxsackie Correctional Facility in south of Albany. He recently lost his last chance. State appealed to overturn his conviction in Heidi Allen's disappearance. He died less than two years away from his first possible parole hearing in January 2020. To this day, Heidi has still never been found and she would have been 45 years old if she's still alive. 
If you have any information about this case, please contact the Oswego County Sheriff's Department at 888-349-3411 or 800-724-8477. As a friendly reminder, I do the best research I possibly can on these videos. I want to emphasize that it is never my intent to offend or upset anyone that may have been involved with these cases or videos. My aim is just to educate and spread awareness about these topics. All of the information I have gathered has been from several different sources online. I understand that all of my information may not be correct. So please feel free to correct me in the comments below. I in no way have intentions of spreading false information. Okay. So yun nga, until now, hindi pa rin nakikita ko nasaan si Heidi. She's still missing. And it's been 25 years. So although may suspect na nahuli, yung magkapatid nga na Tibodo, still, ang sabi nga nila, may possibility na innocent daw si Gary. And never siyang nagsabi ng location kung nasaan man si Heidi. If she's demised or still alive. So if Heidi is still with us or if she's still alive, she would have been 45 years old in September. Kasi nga September 14 siya pinanganak. Nakakalungkot yung mga ganitong cases. Kasi sobrang tagal na. Pagkatapos walang closure. And, alam mo yun, nawala yung magulang niya nang hindi nila alam kung nasan si Heidi. It was heartbreaking for sure. Dahil na sa nanay ni Heidi bilang Nanay, di ba? I'm not sure if you are all familiar, pero a lot of um, Korean mukbangers are on fire these days because of not disclosing um, sponsorship, especially sa mga kinakain nila na food, ano. And, maisingit ko lang. And, sinasabi nila na tinatapon doon yung pagkain, ganto ganyan. Which is feeling ko, hindi naman totoo. I mean, um, kahit ako, syempre, alam nga naman, ilagay ko dito lahat ng nangyayari sa video, di ba? Ulti mo yung pag- I mean, maybe some of the rumors are true, pero naiintindihan ko yung may mga cuts sa video kasi ganun din yung mga video ko, especially katulad nito. Um, kung isasama ko lahat nung pagtitinga ko, pagmula ko ng mga 48 years bago ako matapos at bago ko malunok, siguro aabuti ng siyam-siyam yung videos. 
So, nagigets ko yung um, paghati-hati ng videos, yung mga video cuts. Pero kung katulad lang ng mga ASMR, katulad ni Sass, diba? Konti lang naman yung, um, kung maga maiksi lang yung videos niya, 10 minutes. Pero yung mga story time kasi, medyo mahaba. Siyempre, may mga information kang minsan mali pala yung nasabi mo. So, tatanggalin mo na lang or mag-film ka ng nabagong audio para may insert para ma-correct yung information. And, doon naman sa mga gumagawa ng challenges, para yung mga um, spicy noodles, ganyan, um, may mga mukbangers na ginagawa talaga na uh, they spit out the noodles and then pretend to eat a lot. Ano. So, yeah. Um nagigets ko yung frustration sa yung galit ng mga tao dun sa hindi pagde-divulge ng promotion sa videos kasi nga um, it's a law actually kailangan kailangan ng mga creators na i-divulge kung yung kanilang kung yung kanilang video ay sponsored or may paid promotion kumbaga nasa law yata ng US yun or nasa guidelines ng YouTube so yun, kaya hindi, hindi ako gumagawa ng mga challenge-challenge kasi alam ko hindi ako makakakain ng maanghang because my spice tolerance is zero. Um, point one siguro, ganyan. And hindi ko rin nauubos yung pagkain ko kasi nga, hindi naman to yung mukbang-mukbang, no? Parang um, gusto ko lang kumain habang nagkukwento. Actually, before, I created story time videos or mukbang story time. I used to film ASMRs. Ilang beses ko na itong nasabi sa mga videos ko, but because maingay dito sa amin, ang daming background noises, we live near the main road na may mga bus, may jeep, may tricycle, all kinds of vehicles, hindi talaga carry. I will not be able to pull off yung ASMR. Pwera na lang kung meron akong uh, soundproof na kwarto or filming room, ganyan, which I don't. So, kaya ganito yung ginagawa ko. And, um, yeah. Hindi ko naubos yung food. Of course, kakainin ko yun mamaya. Nandyan din ang aking fam bam. Eh, syempre, hindi pwedeng kumain si Snow kasi bawal sa dog ang table food. But, yeah. Um, let me know what you think about this case. Um, I can't imagine yung naramdaman ng mother ni, ni Heidi na all these years until her deathbed, hindi niya nalaman kung nasaan yung anak niya. Walang closure, pumaga. But, yeah. I hope you guys are safe. Stay home, stay safe. Um, wag tayong magpakalax because the virus is still here wala pa rin vaccine ang dami mali balita na may vaccine na daw dito ganyan. but still prevention is better than cure so that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe I hope to see you on my next video God bless you all, bye